I have one daughter, Rosie, 25. Her mother and I divorced when she was two after I learned she was having an affair with John. John claimed he was Rosie's biological father, so we did a DNA test. I'm her bio father. I don't think it surprised people since Rosie looks a lot like me. My ex and John married once the divorce was finalized, and John became the biggest thorn in my side. He's always bragged about how I'm not Rosie's only dad and how she would grow up with both of us. He taunt me with things like, she'll like me more one day, you're just one of her dads now, you'll lose both of them to me someday, and things of that nature. My ex wanted me out of the picture, so she allowed this as she thought I would give up. But I love my daughter, and despite my hatred for them both, I was calm and civil when my daughter was present, and watched my words even when she wasn't. John had been married when he and my ex started their affair. During the divorce, he learned both the kids involved weren't his. He never saw them again. John and my ex never had any children together either, so he became determined to take over as Rosie's dad. John asked to adopt Rosie six different times while she was young, and she told me about it every time. He and my ex attempted to change her last name to theirs and were denied by the judge. He attempted to get my daughter to follow in his shoes to become an accountant. When Rosie was 14, I was injured significantly and ended up in the hospital for several months and spent several more in rehab recovering. John took great pleasure in being there while I was not. He often painted it like I was some deadbeat. Rosie was never John's biggest fan, but that was the year he truly poisoned their relationship. She decided she wanted to join my business when she finished high school. I set her up as an apprentice so she could learn from my team. It's been amazing. Now Rosie's engaged and she asked me to walk her and her fiancé Seb down the aisle and dance with them. Seb doesn't have parents and he and I have been close since Rosie met him six years ago. I was honoured to be asked to do this for both of them. John was enraged when he heard about this. He approached me while I was grabbing groceries and told me her fiancé could go screw himself but he's Rosie's dad and he should be dancing with her and walking her down the aisle. I was like, you know what, screw it, and gloated that she asked me over him. I told Rosie gave him exactly what he deserved, nothing. He said I should appreciate what he's done for Rosie more, but I gloated more. My ex and John both said I was an idiot. They said I shouldn't be so petty. My sister suggested, while not wrong overall, that maybe it would make Rosie's life harder with her mom and John. This is what gave me pause. Am I the idiot for gloating at my ex-wife's husband? Not the idiot. What's wrong with celebrating a victory? Since Rosie was two years old, you've held it together, biting your tongue both in her presence and outside of it, for two decades. Your soul has reached its limit of proverbial boot prints. Everyone has limits to which they can tolerate being dehumanized and disrespected. You've rightfully reached yours. He had it coming. Enjoy your petty moment. Sounds like John's ex-wife cheated too, had some kids while married to John, and when they got divorced, disappeared with the kids, and him trying to shoehorn his way into Rosie's life, against both Rosie's and OP's will, when Rosie isn't his in any way either. Weirdo. Your daughter made her decision. Johnny Boy and your ex need to respect that. Gloating is generally an idiot move, but John brought all of this on himself. He's been working to turn Rosie against you from the get-go. One piece of advice, going forward, handle this issue with grace. I'm not advocating for the high road, I'm actually advocating for even deeper revenge. The more grace you show, the better life you live, the greater relationship you have with Rosie and your future grandchildren, the more it will make him angry. I don't know, I do think this probably made Rosie's life harder with her mom. Rosie probably appreciated her dad being the bigger man and better person for her her entire childhood. Plus, Opie didn't have to say anything to gloat. The smile on his face while walking his daughter down the aisle on a wedding day and crying tears of joy at their father-daughter dance while John seethes on the sidelines should have been enough. I have to say, you are the idiot. Your sister is right. You've made things a little harder for Rosie. I, 25 female, am having a conflict with my husband's sister, 36. She's getting married in two weeks and her dress code is incredibly complicated to adhere to for me. It's black tie, long sleeves and floor length gowns. The conflict happened because I'm currently 34 weeks pregnant and overheat very quickly and the wedding is entirely outside, in the middle of the day, in the southern USA, where it's incredibly hot. I cannot be in a long sleeve floor length gown in the heat for 8 hours. I've sent her a few dresses to try to compromise, which I will link in the comments for further information, but she's completely adamant about exactly what she wants. I told her yesterday that I cannot attend her wedding if she doesn't budge even slightly on the dress code. 
I told her she had the right to have her wedding exactly how she wanted it, for it to be her perfect day, but I had the right to look out for my own health. She freaked out at me and told me I was being incredibly selfish and that, for once, it isn't about me and my damn baby, which she only said because she's jealous. I'm having the first grandchild and she felt like she should have had a baby before me and my husband. Since then, my husband's side of the family have told me I'm being selfish and to just compromise one day to keep the peace. I don't think I should need to compromise my health for her wedding. Am I the idiot and being unreasonable? Edit, just to clear some stuff up, I suppose. This isn't for religious reasons, it's personal. She thinks the style is elegant. Also, I've told her black tie isn't for a noon wedding in a field, which is where this wedding is. I made a joke about her having a third wedding. This is her second marriage. I'm not shaming her for having a second wedding, but she is very high maintenance. I had a Pinterest board for my wedding decorations as well. The snark was that all her ideas were combined from multiple different themes and boards. Sister-in-law is going to be a sweaty, gross mess. Her dress is also long-sleeved and floor-length. It's hot. Her wedding is outside. Everyone's going to be a hot, sweaty mess. Not the idiot. Who has a black tie, long-sleeve only dress code in the summer? Her photos are going to look ridiculous. Everyone will be sweaty with melting makeup. I can't imagine who told her this was a good idea. What about older relatives or kids? Sister-in-law is the major idiot. It's a major health risk for their guests. Grabbing popcorn and waiting to see how many people actually adhere to said dress code. Pregnant woman here. Never mind the fact that black tie isn't for daytime at all. There's no way I'd be able to adhere to her dress code. Today, I just went outside in just a t-shirt and jeggings in 84 Fahrenheit heat, and I was overheating and I wasn't out for eight hours. When you're pregnant, your temperature is already higher than normal without being forced to wear black tie attire. OP, tell the flying monkeys to go fly south for the winter. Non-pregnant woman here, and there's no way I could adhere to that dress code, even if the wedding was indoors with AC, unless the AC was the best AC in the world at set to max cooling. Also, you can mention to her that a black tie wedding traditionally happens after 5.30pm. She should adjust her attire to a garden party, which would be entirely appropriate. Or maybe she'll revise the dress code for her next wedding. Stay home and don't worry about it. Karma is on its way. My husband and I have been foster parents for over a decade. Two months ago, we had four minor children living in our home. Our tween biological son, our pre-tween and kindergarten adopted sons, and our toddler foster son. Our 22-year-old foster daughter also still lives at home with us, and my 19-year-old biological son spent the summer back home after his freshman year of college. We also have other adult children who don't live at home, but aren't really relevant. Seven weeks ago, we got a call for an emergency placement of five siblings, a nearly adult female, a tween female, a tween male, a pre-tween female, and a younger male. We only had two spare bedrooms, but had enough spare beds in storage to make it work with the girls in one room and the boys in the other. It now looks like we'll be fostering the five of them for considerably longer than we thought when they were placed with us. Because of the large age gaps between the girls, having them share more long term isn't really ideal. We already moved the boys a few weeks ago. We bought a triple bunk for our youngest foster son's room, moved the new youngest boys in with them, and put the older boys' bed in our middle boys' room. This allowed the oldest girl to get her own room and the two younger girls to share. None of this created any drama and the boys were more than happy to share rooms. Now that my 19-year-old is going back to college, we discussed and eventually agreed on turning his bedroom into a room for our tween girl so she has her own space away from her little sister. He wasn't impressed when I brought up the idea but agreed. However, before he left for college a few days ago, he argued with my husband, complaining it's unfair he's lost his room and has nowhere to go when he comes back home now. My other adult son also contacted me about the situation to essentially tell me it was a bad idea. His brother is really upset and just because he's been away for college a year doesn't mean he's ready to lose his spot in the house. Last year we didn't need the extra space so his room stayed empty when he was at college. This year it makes no sense to leave a bedroom empty and to make two girls five years apart in age share a room. He's still welcome home whenever and if things change, e.g. he drops out, we can rearrange things again. Losing his room is temporary as we don't normally have so many foster kids. When our other kids and grandkids visit, they happily use an air mattress in the den or bunk with a sibling, and he can do the same on his school breaks. He'll most likely have his room back by next summer, and if not, we'll figure out solutions then. I've explained all this to him, but he's not hearing me. Am I the idiot? I've bought new decor, etc. for the room, and plan on decorating and moving our foster daughter in tomorrow. 
Although I respect and applaud you for wanting to help out, I think this is a you are the idiot. How big is your actual house? I'm counting like 10 people plus you two living in your house and you're talking about triple bunk beds? I wouldn't be surprised if the older children feel that way too and just aren't saying it. Geez, how tall are their ceilings for triple bunk beds? I completely agree with this. OP does not have space to support the number of foster kids she's committed to, at least not in a way that's comfortable for the kids already in the family. When it starts hurting family dynamics, it's time to stop. You are the idiot, OP. Don't be surprised when 19-year-old son chooses not to come back. Why is it important for your tween foster daughter to need her own room but not for your tween son to need his own room? It really is coming off that you're prioritizing the foster kids over your biological and adopted children and that will cause a whole host of issues. Or maybe it's those monthly checks. Finally, someone noticed that her tween bio son also lost a room. I would hate her forever. Why are you running the whole foster home? It sounds like you just collect kids because of some Mother Teresa syndrome. There's no way you can take care of 11 children that well without your own children feeling left out. You're taking your own children's place, adopted and biological, to the point that your place sounds cramped, and not even your adult children with grandchildren can visit because you're dealing with a toddler and a nearly adult child, among others. I know you've said it's temporary, but by redecorating and making it someone else's, even for a little while, you're making it no longer his. Find another way. My wife is six years older than me. I'm 54. I still enjoy skiing, scuba diving, hiking, etc. My wife used to be my partner in all that stuff. Now she's happy reading, gardening, watching TV and being a grandma. I love being a grandpa, but I like taking my grandchildren out to the pool or the park. I do play games at home with them as well. My wife says that she doesn't want to do the things we used to do anymore. She says she doesn't have the energy anymore. I don't mind doing them on my own. For example, this last winter she got to stay at the hotel, the chalet and the town while I went skiing. This summer she didn't want to come down to the Caribbean to go scuba diving. I would have loved her company, but she said she wanted to help with the grandkids more. I said I understood, but I still wanted my vacation. So I went. When I got back, she was upset with me. She said I was an idiot for taking a vacation without her. She could have come. I just wasn't interested in hanging around the city for an extra two weeks. She said that she felt like I abandoned her. I said I worked hard all my life to enjoy it and not lay like a potato. She said her new hobbies might be sedentary, but she enjoyed them. I said that was fine, but I didn't want to do old people crap until I had to. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, except for referring to gardening and reading as old people crap. I'm 33 and I love gardening and reading every night before bed. Ha ha. But seriously, you brought up the trip and she said she didn't want to go. Are you supposed to not go because she doesn't want to? You didn't abandon her, you decided not to go when she had every opportunity to. She could have just sat on the beach and read her book or gone to little shops and explored doing her own thing the whole time as she wanted to, but chose not to. The internalized ageism is coming from inside the house, OP. You are the idiot. Her hobbies aren't old people crap, they're just not what you like doing. Don't be rude. Certainly both of you can compromise so you can spend time with each other, but there's no need to be disparaging. Honestly, sounds like you've already checked out of this marriage. My parents are divorced and I, a teen female, used to bounce between my mom and dad's every other week. But since last week, I've stayed with my mom more than with my dad. Dad's remarried and mom isn't. My stepmom and dad have three kids together, pre-tween, younger grammar school age and preschooler. My dad's house has more money and they go on more vacations than my mom can afford. This year, my mom was able to get money for us to go on vacation, but it overlapped with my dad's Disney booking. I wanted to go on vacation with mom, and I told dad that mom and I already had the plans. He said it was the first Disney vacation, and he figured I wouldn't want to miss out on my half-siblings experiencing it for the first time. But this was the first vacation mom and I could do since I was nine. It's been over a month since the vacations, and in the last week or thereabouts, my dad and stepmom went from disappointed but sort of understanding to mad that mom didn't sacrifice the vacation with me so I could enjoy seeing my siblings experience Disney for the first time. They said they were sorry my mom denied me the opportunity to enjoy the amazing moment. I told them they were getting a bit carried away over it all, and it wasn't a big deal. They said that given how important my siblings are to me, it was a huge deal to make me miss out on those memories and experiences with them. I told them I didn't care about being at Disney for their first time. I said I never really cared about seeing their first vacation, etc. 
that they care as their parents, but they're not such a huge deal in my life that I feel I'm being denied their milestones. This came as a shock to them, as I'm their much older sister, and I told them I might be older, but I would rather have memories with mom than them. My dad and stepmom didn't handle what I said well, and maybe I was wrong. They told me my half-siblings adore me, and they believe I think the world of them too. The fact I admit to not feeling that way and not caring is a cruel thing. They also accuse me of leading everyone on. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Were they angry because they were actually expecting you to help with the kids? Oh no, my unofficial unpaid babysitter has bailed on me. Let me make you feel bad about it by using the kids' emotions against you. Agree, they couldn't use you as a free babysitter so they could get some alone time at Disney. Your dad and stepmom are wrong, rude and ridiculous. This should all be a non-issue. Trips are over. You went with your mom. There needs to be no more discussion. Calling you cruel and saying you're leading them on is unacceptable. I'm so sorry you're dealing with this. 